All righty, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Matthew McDermott, and uh, this is Dev207, uh, Developing Social Applications for SharePoint 2013. Um, if you are going to, uh, if you have to dash out of here and you don't have time for questions, go ahead and um, um, I'll throw my Twitter handle up in just a second, but use the hashtag Dev207. Um, and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. Uh, if you have compliments, if you have nice things to say, Dev207 would be great. If you have complaints, use IT103. Okay. Uh, my name is Matt McDermott. I'm a uh, SharePoint MVP. Um, I live, uh, I, I work for a company called Aptalon. We're a SharePoint consultancy and I've um, got four great friends that I work with in that. And uh, I live in Austin, Texas with my wife and my dog, Ruby. Ruby and I travel everywhere together, okay? Um, everywhere we can. Unfortunately, we didn't bring her to England, but we do compete in uh, dog sports, and she's, um, she's pretty darn good at it. The, uh, the book that I collaborated on recently is called uh, Expert SharePoint 2010 Practices. I wrote a little chapter in there about user profile service and Windows Phone, but I also trained for Critical Path. You can uh, follow me on Twitter at Matthew McD. Catch my blog. I will be blogging and uh, putting up all of the code and the slides on my, on my blog. And at the end, I've got a bit.ly that'll get you there. And then if you have any questions, you can always email me at matthew at aptalon.com. So I think it's important to understand the components of social when you're planning to do social with SharePoint 2013. The major components of social are the user profile, which in SharePoint 2013 is largely unchanged from what it was in SharePoint 2010. The approach that we use as developers is very changed. So we'll be talking about that today. You also have feeds. The activity feed in SharePoint 2010 is absolutely nothing like the feeds in SharePoint 2013. We use a completely different approach to work with them. We'll be talking about that today as well. You also have a new mechanism for following. In 2010 and in 2007, when you followed a person, that was a colleague. Now we have following for many more um, objects inside of SharePoint. There's also social search. I'm doing a session, uh, uh, Dev 209, I guess. Uh, not the next session, but the first one after lunch in this room. If you're interested in um, using some of these approaches for search, I'll be covering that in that session. So I have a couple of cautionary tales that I'll talk to you about, a couple of approach things. But when it comes to planning your app, it's important to understand that you have many different mechanisms to connect to SharePoint 2013. And it depends on your skill with these approaches and whether or not SharePoint's even going to let you use them. So if you're planning a full trust app, then you have everything at your disposal. And I have to say, if you're going to deploy a full trust app, you could use the REST services I'll be talking about, but you have the entire server object model. It's like saying, I have all of a hardware store to work with, but I'm just going to use my little tools that I have over here. You might as well use the entire hardware store. But more likely, if you're building a remote .NET client, which I'll demonstrate in a little bit, you can use the .NET client side object model. Or you can use REST. You'll notice a common thread here. REST is available for all of these options. For a SharePoint hosted app, you're not allowed to run any code, any, uh, any compiled code. So you have the JavaScript object model or REST. For a provider hosted app or an auto hosted app, you can use .NET. And then if you're going to write for the phone, if you're going to write for Windows Phone 7 or Windows Phone 8, then you can use the Silverlight API. They have a special mobile, um, they have a special mobile compile for you to make that easier. Or you can use REST. So understanding the user profile means understanding the, the person, what I call the person ecosystem. The person ecosystem starts with the user profile at its center. Either your user profile, you as the user viewing whatever it is you're viewing in SharePoint, getting your user profile for me is a piece of cake. I just say, get user profile. If you add no attributes to it, it gets you. If I start decorating it with attributes, then I can get other, at other people's user profiles. From that, I can gather and get your following, the people, the user profiles who have you as one of the followed attributes. I can also get documents, I can get tags, and I can get sites. Those are the four major actors that you can retrieve off of a user profile. 
Why the heck they don't have list items in there, I don't know, because we can follow documents, and as far as I remember, documents descend from items. So why not just, I don't know. You can't follow items. You can follow documents. You cannot follow items. Go figure. So uh, you can also follow discussions. So if I have a threaded conversation going on in a news feed, I can follow that conversation as well. It's a little different mechanism. And then I can also, um, in, if the discussions are taking place inside a community site, the community site has merit. And so I can also attribute merit to that person from that community site. So I can find out that a person who's a SharePoint expert and is in the SharePoint community site might be a, a top rated person in that site. But over on the exchange side, he's just a lurker. Okay, so I can discover those attributes about people. I can also look at their followers. I can also find their social posts. And once I've found their social posts, I can extract the data from those social posts. I can find the links that are embedded in those posts, the videos that are embedded in those posts, and the, uh, the at mentions, the people that they're talking about in those posts, and the people that like the stuff that that person's posting. So do you see how you could just create this massive, scary social web of people who like this person but don't follow this person but like other stuff that other people like? And I could keep going, but it would, it's just way too early to do that. So what do you want to do? If you want to work with user profiles, if you want to work with social feeds, or you want to work with site feeds, Site feeds are essentially the same thing as the corporate news feed. It's just contained inside a single site collection. Or you want to work with community sites. The asterisk on the community sites is the dirty little secret that community sites are just a team site. The discussions are just a list. So I'm not going to go into that. Any of the CSOM stuff you've already been doing, any of that still works with community sites. There's nothing magical about it. If you want to post to a discussion, you're just adding a list item. So you have some platform options available to you depending on how you want to connect, what technology you're using, and where you're going to host that application. From an API perspective, we now have the server side REST interface, which is addressable under underscore API rather than underscore VTI bin slash whatever the service was that you were going after, or underscore VTI bin user profile service dot Azimax. We're not using Azimax services anymore. Some of them are still there. They're deprecated. You want to be using the REST interfaces or some of the other options that you have for your client side code. What can you do? Well, through REST and through the client side object model, you can get a user profile and you can get the properties of that user profile. You can get a user's feeds. There's a number of different feed options available. I'll do in a demonstration. And you can get their replies. And I put a little asterisk up there because you're going to get back a big chunk of JSON. So in order to kind of reconstruct what's being shown in the UI, there's some assembly required. You're going to have to kind of post it, pick it all apart, and put it all back together. You can update the current user's photo. Okay. You can update their user profile, and you can update the location of their photo. You can also create posts for the currently logged in user, the user who's using your app. That's important to know because this is what you cannot do. Okay? You cannot find out if a user exists. You used to be able to do that through the Azimex service. If you're going to do that, you, if you want to do any of these things, you still can't but you'll need to write your own server-side implementation that talks to your app to do this stuff. So it can be done, it just can't be done through REST. So you cannot find out if a user exists. I can't say, hey, does, does uh, Doghouse Toys slash Bob, it, does he have a user profile? It doesn't do that. You can't create a new user profile. You can't change a user profile. The asterisk is the photo. That's the one thing you can change on the user profile. Okay, So you can change the photo, but that's it. You cannot delete a user profile. You're kind of getting a sense of they don't want you doing this. They don't want you making these major changes. And you cannot create a, a post. Okay, You can't create a news feed post on behalf of someone else. Okay? 
It's, you're going to log your user in, they're going to play in the, in the social, and things are going to happen. At the end of this, I have a demo where we try to do something like this. I tried every sneaky way in the books, and I'll show you the way that Microsoft recommends after I'd beaten my head against a wall for a while. So you can't create posts for another user. If you want to do that, if you want to impersonate another user, you would have to write the implementation on your side, and you would have to call your service to do that. So that would take full trust, which means it is not cloud ready. So I want to start out and just talk to you about the social feed JavaScript object model. We'll do a little demo here. So if I'm in search, I'm going to gloss over only a few details, because if you're really interested in how this stuff works, the search side of it, I'm going to try to stick to the JavaScript side of it. If you're interested in the search side of it, come to the session um, later today. So I'm going to do a search here for SharePoint, and that's going to pull up some people when I click on the People tab. What I want to do is when I hover over one of these guys, I want to add to that hover. I want to add their social feeds. I want to put in some JavaScript in there. The way to do that in SharePoint is simply to go into Design Manager, go to Upload Design Files, and open this link. When you open this link, it's going to open up Explorer. You go into Display Templates, because that's what's being used in Search. I go into Search, and I've already created one, because the, uh, all you have to do is drag and drop an HTML file in here to make this work. And what I'm going to do is go into the Item Person Social. I'm going to open that in Notepad. And all I did to change this file, this is the person result file. All I did was change this so that when, uh, when there's a hover, let me see, where's my hover? There's my hover ID. Uh, you know, you practice and you practice so that you can do this very smoothly. And then they change the resolution on you and you completely lose it. So hang on just a sec. Oh, good. Hang on. I know it's there. That's the hover ID. There it is, hover URL. OK. So here's the hover URL. It's calling this item person social hover panel. So I'm going to go open that up. Here's my item person social hover panel. And inside here, I've done one important thing that most folks won't remind you about. You rename it. Give it a unique name. If you leave it in person, just the way it is, you're going to have two entries It's hard to choose from. Then down here, I added some code that simply goes out. It grabs a unique ID so that my, my uh, jQuery will work. And then I call a, a function that I created called get feeds. I make sure that I have a client context, and then I call my feed manager. Once you've called the feed manager, you pass in the client context. Now I can start working with SharePoint Social. I, I construct a feed options. In this case, I only want five items to show. I'm trying to optimize my return so that this goes pretty quickly. By default, it brings back 20, which is a whole lot of JSON. And then I have the option of which kind of feed I want to get. If you think about the social feeds and the way these things display, when I'm looking at, a, uh, when I'm looking at somebody's my site, like if I jump over here and I go to Willis About Me, and I look at her news feed, there are several feeds available to me. Are you really working on it? Oh, hang on. This is solvable. Note to you developers, when you're working inside of uh, VMs, this app fabric crashing service, I mean caching service, it's going to go down from time to time. There we go. So it's an IT pro issue. But uh, let me get this to come back. It says it's collecting, but I know that it's not. Here's another useful tip. There is a, if you do help on um, 
LMT. It's going to give you this repopulate microblog LMT cache. Okay, so we're going to go back up here, get a couple of lines. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come back to this demo because this will repopulate itself in just a sec. So I'm starting to get, okay, so I've got following, I've got everyone, I've got Will as mentions, I've got activities. So essentially I have a number of feeds that are available to me. So inside my JavaScript, I've got to decide which of those feeds I want to see. So here, I've got a, an example in my code of personal feed, of news feed. These are basically the different tabs for that user. But I want to just grab the user's feed. So in this case, I'm saying get feed for, and I pass in the target user. Um, so then I load up my feed manager. This is all, you've seen this. Hopefully, if you've been in this room at least twice today, you've seen this stuff. You call it execute query async, and you wait for that guy to come back. Now, here's the trick if you're working inside of all the rest of it, all the rest of this, like 600 lines, is just dealing with the JSON. And I'm sure that there's more efficient ways. I am not a jQuery expert. If you guys were here for Andrew's session yesterday, he said, how many of you are, J are uh, JavaScript experts and how many of you just dabble? I dabble. There's this function called add post render callback. If you're working in display templates, this is the magic render. Once the entire page renders, it calls this, okay? So if you're writing um, asynchronous code, then you need to do that so that your code, so here's mine, I just went ahead and added a post render callback that says once the page loads, jump back and go get my feeds, okay? So let's see what happens when I, uh, when I make this happen. So we go back in, I've uploaded all my code, and um, now what I need to do is go back to my search site. Go back to my search site. And I have to make the search site use the code that I just uploaded. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something new in search called a result type to do that. So I'm going to go into result types. And I'm going to take a real simple shortcut. I'm going to grab this person result type and I'm going to copy it. I'm going to call it social person. And down here, instead of people item, remember I renamed that title? Look, people social item. That's where it's pulling that from. So if you're seeing duplicates in there, it's because you're not renaming your items. All right, so this is a long way to get to a fairly simple demo that's going to take me back to search. I'm going to jump in here and do the same SharePoint search I did before. Jump over to the people tab. And when I hover over Ruby, there she is. So you see, let me do a, uh, wait for it, wait for it. So here's Ruby, and right there is her social feed. Okay, so all I did was add a section to the results, and it went ahead and grabbed Ruby's social feed. Now, this is not quite a geeky enough demo, so let me make it just a little bit more geeky. She's a little too low. Over and over Willa. There it is. There's Willa's personal feed. Okay, so planning my SharePoint social session, starting a community, etc. So that's quite not quite geeky enough because when you get into developing these hover panels and stuff like that, you're deep into JavaScript, which means you're going to learn to do F12. You're going to clear all this console, and you're going to start doing your JavaScript debugging. Right? This is pure magic. Check this out. I'm going to choose, since I've loaded the page, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to find item person social hover. I'm going to choose that just for grins. I'm going to throw a breakpoint in here right about, I don't care, right about there. Now that I'm doing that, I'm going to do start debugging. What will happen, let me see if I can scale this just a little bit. What's going to happen is, I'm going to refresh my page just so you can kind of see this is when I hover, see how I'm being careful where I'm going? When I hover, it's going to break. Oh, it didn't break. Start debugging. That all looks good. Make sure I got my page. It's definitely debugging. Item person social hover. 
Okay, there it goes, breaks. I got to hover, boom, right into my code. Wow, what a pain. Now I've got to step through my code, which you will do like one time. So I can go F10 and I can sit here and step through my code. But if I hit F5, um, yeah, okay, I'm back here. F5, okay, it didn't break. Do you know why it broke the first time? Because my mouse is sitting in the center of the page. So as soon as it jumped back to IE, it hit hover, and it takes me right back into my debugger. It's awful. It's really hard to debug these things. So here's the trick I learned. Inside your code, inside your code, use console log. Stop using breakpoints. This is kind of the JavaScript equivalent of REM. OK? So check it out. If I go back to my debugger, if I go back to my debugger, Notice over here, I have all the information I need. I know that I'm in get feeds. I know that I got Ruby. Down here, I got Ruby, right? Here's Cheyenne, OK? So if I go back and I hover over Willa, actually, let me kill that breakpoint. If I go back here and I hover over Willa's, it doesn't hit. But if I go back to my console, here's Willa. So those console.log lines make your life a lot easier on the hovers because you don't want to break the hover behavior. You just want to dive back into your debugger. All right. So that's that. OK, so basically what we just did was we, uh, we got a social feed manager. We set the social feed options. We chose which social feed type we wanted, personal news, get feed for users. And then we executed the query asynchronously. I was a little worried that I wasn't going to have an internet connection and things weren't going to work out the way I wanted, so that's the screenshot. But I want to jump into using the REST interfaces for social feeds. So when you're working with REST, everything you've been learning here at the conference, I have to consolidate and trust that making RESTful calls is not that big a deal. It's the same with SharePoint. And so what I did is I created this user interface, this rich client user interface to demonstrate some of the, um, some of the capabilities of SharePoint. So this is my SharePoint Postomatic registered trademark, Matthew McDermott. And so what I can do is I can go in here and I can put in a user account like Ruby. And I can use, if I could type, and I can use the... SharePoint REST interface to create, an inter to create a, a, a call that will generate those social feeds. So if I go back and I change this back to Willa, I can do the same thing. I can go get Willas. So this is one way of creating an interface so that your users can get information about other people from any kind of client application. Again, I'm using REST here. So any kind of client application or actually create new posts. So I can go in here and I can say hello from SPEVO 13 and we are dev 207, right? Is that what I said? Okay. So we'll go ahead and create that post. That right there is my little auth token that I'm spitting out on the screen. And then the post was successful. So since I'm doing a post, I have to authenticate the user. So we do this thing that is affectionately known as get canary. You call the, you call the API and say, can I have an access token? And it says, who are you? And it does all that stuff on the server. And it says, hey, here is your access token. And then you take that token and you append it to every successive post. Doing gets, those are free. One call, you get the information back. But doing a post is a little bit more complicated. So if I go back in here, let me close these guys out. I don't need them anymore. Let's talk about create post. This is just the UI. And like I said, I'll make this code available. This is just the UI to be able to create this. And then what I did is I created a microblog post um, li JavaScript library. You will notice that I am not using namespaces. If you want to learn how to use namespaces and all that fun stuff, Please do. It is a best practice, but we'll do best practices next year. So um, I've got a document ready function that simply attaches um, to each of the new items that I create, and I'll show you that in just a sec. But here's the get personal feed. Um, this is the get for the personal feed. So I just set up an Ajax call with a get. 
I tell it the content type is application JSON. I want my data type to be JSON. Pass in the URL. So notice the URL at the top there. The API, can you guys see that okay in the back? Is the font big enough? Okay. So I've got underscore API. That's the used to be VTI bin. And then I call social feed actor. And I pass in the account as the item property. Then I just append feed. And that gives me the feed. So very simple URLs. This is all really well documented on, uh, on, on MSDN. I process the data, and I basically just stuff them all into my, into my uh, list of lists. If I want to create the post, the first thing I have to do is get the token. So here's the get token part. Underscore API context info. You just call the site that you're trying to reach and say, can you give me back some context info? What it's going to return to you is a chunk of data, and inside that chunk of data, inside that chunk of data is this form digest value. You're going to take that form digest value. You are not going to touch it. You're not going to look at it. You're not going to play with it. You're just going to stick it on every request that you send back to the server from now on. So I'm going to create my uh, post to my feed is the one that, uh, that I used first. So here is the social feed, my feed, post, of type post. And then we have to pass back something called rest creation data. That's how we construct the post that we want to send back. This is a really simple one. This is text only. So all I do is create the rest creation data right here. Update status text is false. And the context is my message that creates the post. The other thing that I can do is I can, uh, I can go back to my post-o-matic here. And if I say, this is a reply. OK, so you remember that I created a post on, uh, on Willa here. So let me change this to, to Ruby. I'm going to get Ruby's personal feeds. Oh, come on. Let's do this again. That's my bad. There is no DHY. There is only DHT. OK. So then what I'm going to do is say this is a reply to Ruby's video. And uh, let's do uh, SP Evo 13, just so you know that I'm not messing around. And what I'm going to do is click this guy, because I created an on-click event. We'll jump back over to my news feeds. And uh, let me refresh these. You notice the following said two. So here's Ruby's post. And here is, this is a reply to Ruby's SP, um, uh, SP Evo 13 from Willa. Wow, you guys are tough. That's cool. <laughs> I think that's cool. So, and then, of course, here's the other one that I did before, which is SP uh, Evo 13 and Dev 207. Um, so you're able to create replies to posts if you know the ID of the post that you're applying to. So if you remember, back at the top of the screen, okay, back at the top of the screen, I created this, this dot .live, and I created a click event. The thing in jQuery, this is jQuery's magic, okay? The thing that's cool about, who's, who here's heard about dot .live? Awesome, one dude, okay. Dot .live says, if there's nothing in the list, just wait. When something hits that list, attach this click event to it. So you don't have to have anything. You don't have to do a for each or anything like that. As soon as you start populating that list, those items are going to pick up on this click event. Of course, this click event is go get the token and get started. So let's go look at that. So what I do is after I get the token, if there's an ID in there, then I go ahead and post a reply. And this is what the reply looks like. So create post reply. I call post reply on my REST API of type post. Here's my REST creation data. But the magic is that I have to pass in, and it's not right on there. I have to pass in the, uh, the token. So here's my authentication token. And what I'm looking for, here's the post ID. That says if that's null, it's going to create a new post. If that's populated, it's going to create a reply on the post that has that ID. So that's how you create replies. Likewise, if you want to do likes, 
you'll do a like, and you'll give it the post ID of the post that you want people to like. Cool? OK. So uh, some examples of the RESTful URLs that we're talking about. If you're going to call the social feed, social feed, my feed, posts is going to do that post. If you're going to do a reply, you're going to do the reply. The site, <laughs> the site doesn't matter. OK? It's just a SharePoint. It's just a, a web address that's going to get us to the social, um, the social API. The web address does not matter. I mean, it has to be a SharePoint site. But it doesn't have to be the my site. Now, you can also post to a site. You can post to any site that has the news feed capability turned on. OK? So like a community site or any team site that you turn on the news feed. In that case, you're going to call, you're going to pass in the site newsfeed.aspx location, and then you'll be able to post into that site. Essentially what that, whoop, essentially what that looks like, come on, there's my tab, there it is. Essentially what that looks like is I have a, uh, I have a social site here. Get that back on screen. I have my, uh, my SharePoint, here's my SharePoint community site. So it's on intranet communities. Internet Community Sites SharePoint. So I put in that location down here, and then I can create a site post. Create a site post. Post was successful. Jump back here, do the loop. And of course, it's working on it. But there it is, new site post. So same thing, just a slightly different URL. And then if you want to get those, you're going to do a get on the same. And here are the posts. So the code for that is essentially just underscore API social feed actor. The important thing to note here is that that is the site. Here, it's the root web. And I don't know why, because they didn't follow site web, 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 slash API. You just go to the root and do that, but then you pass in the site web, 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 newsfeed.aspx that you're going to, and that'll give you your site feed. When you get the response back, it's going to look a lot like this. You have the social actors or the different chunks of, uh, of information out of the social feed. It'll give you an email address. It gives you the image URI. It gives you a lot of different information. You can even find out if those social actors follow the person who you are making the request on behalf of. Creating a post, my feed post, create the rest creation data. Make sure you pass in that request digest. You don't need it for gets, but you need it for posts. And then create the post body. I'm going to do this again in the client side object model in just a sec. So if it seems like I'm going fast, it's because I have two, what I think are two cool demos at the end that will kind of tie this together. But I wanted you to have this information in both the slides and the code so that you, um, you had a good sense of how this is all pulled together. Troubleshooting this REST creation data is quite tricky. Fiddler is your friend, and IE's uh, the F12 debugging tools or um, um, sounds like Firefox. Firebug um, is excellent. OK, the user profile service. No longer do you have to use the user profile service Azimax. No longer do you have to construct SOAP calls and send them in. Now you have to construct um, REST requests or JavaScript object model requests to be able to do this. The thing that I like about it the most is that it is much more performant than the user profile um, API. And so I've created a SharePoint user profile. Again, my graphic artist has just gone overboard on the UI. And uh, um, we've got something for you. So what I'm going to do first is simply just pass in a user profile, a user identity, and get their user profile. And get their user profile. And get their user profile and refresh the page, up oh, there it was, and get their user profile. OK, user profile service is a little sleepy. It's because I said it was performant. Um, so I get a lot of information on a straight user profile. So this is just, hey, go get me a user profile. These are kind of the default properties that come back with the user profile service. So I have the basics. 
I have the account name. I have their direct reports. These are the people who in Active Directory, who in Active Directory, are, they, are, this, they are managed by this person. These are not the followers. These are the direct reports. Following is a social feature. All of the Active Directory, if that's what you're using, is your LDAP store to populate the user profiles. That is, um, this is more of the organizational structure data. I have their email. The manager object is the person who's above me. And then um, I have whether or not I'm followed. I'm not following myself. So let me put Ruby in here, and you'll see that the, some of these values will change subtly. And uh, so now I have that and is followed is now true because Willa follows Ruby. So I'm able to get a little bit of, of uh, parallel data from the user profile service. But if I want, I can also simply make a request for a user profile property, like I can ask for the preferred name. Did you see how much faster that was? So one of the performance tips is instead of requesting the entire user profile, if you only need one value, just request that one value and get it back because it is significantly faster. We didn't really have this option in, uh, in 2010. And how many of you worked with the user profile service in SharePoint 2010 or before? OK, hands down. How many of you had to write your own test client just so you could make sure that your real code was working? How many of you wrote like a full-on user profile service test harness? or downloaded one from CodePlex, or ripped one off from your friends. How many of you never raise your hand in a session? <laughs> I'm just checking, OK. So, um, so I can make these calls. I can request, if all I need is somebody's picture, then I can go in here and I can request their picture. OK, now this is case sensitive. This will drive you insane. Everything else is camel case except for picture URL. See, it's all uppercase for the U, the R, and the L. Just, I'm telling you, it's going to catch you. You're going to find that out, and you're going to, oh, Matt told me that. OK, now I do have a, I have a custom property, and this one's misspelled. So let me get it in here and spell it right. Uh, no, actually, it's not. So I have a custom user profile property that I put in called Twitter account name. In the user profile, the end users can go in and put in their Twitter account name. If they opt in, then I'm going to go grab all of their tweets. Okay? And so what I can do is I can run a process that says, hey, user profile, go get me a piece of data that I can use to go and do something else. I can go get external data. So um, my account, let's start with me here. Oop, that's not me. I'm running here as Willa. She's using my account. So I'm going to do uh, get user profile property for Twitter account name. So that's Matthew McD. So if the internet is working for me, it is. Then uh, so here's some of my tweets up early for an outing with SP runners, et cetera. So let's jump back over here. And if I do get tweets for that user, what I ought to see is that I went out to Twitter just that fast. I grabbed the user profile property that the, can, that the person put in, went out to Twitter, grabbed their tweets, put them up here. Wow, you guys are rough. I think that's cool. Come on. Thank you. OK. OK. All right. I have to beg. That's what I've learned from this audience. I have to beg. OK. So let me put in Ruby here. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to do get tweets for user. So there's Golden Dog Ruby. That is actually her, uh, her Twitter handle. So um, if you want to follow my dog and not follow me, that's fine. Uh, so here's Ruby's um, Twitter uh, account. And uh, back to here. So it has, um, you know, it has her app mentions and things like that. So you can take the data that's in the user profile and you can move it around. I've done this for clients so many times. We, take, we have them opt in for spouses' birthdays, spouses' names, all kinds of information. You have a form where people can enter information if you want that only they can see. You can make it private to the company and just collect information about them. You can also hide it from the user which means I can put information in there about that person that they can't see, but I can use it in my applications. That's cool. It's sneaky, but it's cool. OK, so this was just in case I didn't have an internet connection. All right, so my user profile API options, 
I can use a DLL if I'm on the box. I can use a client DLL if I'm off the box. I can use SP user profiles JS if that's an option for me in my SharePoint hosted app, or I can use the REST interface, underscore API, uh, SP user profiles, people manager, and plow through that. All right, so there's a REST example. This is what I use to do the, to do the uh, get user profile property for. Pass in the account name. This has preferred name. In my case, I use the Twitter account name. And then uh, pass in the domain user, and you're off to the races. It's going to send you that data back in a nice, tight little JSON package that you can then spend hours trying to figure out how to get it to show up in the API or in your user interface. So let me talk about putting it all together. I've got two demos for you for putting this together. Uh, the first one comes from that little company that could. The little company starts out the guy with a great idea. The guy with a great idea knows how to do development, but he doesn't know how to do sales, so he hires a sales guy. The sales guy starts selling the product, right? As soon as the sales guy realizes he needs, he needs more salespeople, he hires two salespeople, he becomes the sales manager, and the very first purchase he makes is a bell. Because whenever his salespeople make a sale, he rings the bell, right? Then they go global. The guys in London can't hear the bell when they ring it in LA. So they need a way to publish these wins out to the company. Okay? So we have the SharePoint Social API, right? So what I'm going to show you is a CRM integration where once you have a win, let me pull up my CRM server here. Once you have a win, this is a CRM plugin. I'm not going to show you how to build an entire CRM plugin, but literally of the hundreds of lines of code in here, I have like eight because I just ripped off a sample, right? Plagiarize, plagiarize, let no one's work evagiarize. So here's, uh, here's my create social post. I'm passing in the my site, bad example. Best practices are coming later. They've actually implemented this thing in the plugin model that it'll take a settings XML file. I started going down that route, it was working great, but then I commented it out. So my site, I need the actor, the project, the actual revenue. All of that comes from making requests back to CRM about the thing that the sale that just closed. Once I have that information, I pass it into my um, client side object model, .NET, client side object model code. I create a client context. I grab a social feed manager. I create some social post creation data, and then I apply post content. That's that debug line right there, or that's the line that's, that's in red. I apply this. What does this do? Well, it uses token replacement. Thank you. So I've got pound zero, or uh, at zero. That's going to become a mention. Then I have, over here, I have the actual revenue. That's the dollar amount. And then I have... The one, what's going to happen, again, this will make you laugh, hopefully, is then I say, here's the content. So that's the text. Here's the payload. The first social data item is an actor. Guess what it does? It substitutes it out for zero. The second item in the array goes into one. If you need 10 things in your post, make sure there's 10 things in here, OK? Because then when it assembles this post, it's going to take all of that data and it's going to make this beautiful, hopefully, beautiful little line based on my social actor. So then we're going to do the, uh, we're going to get a client result. We're going to call the feed manager, create post. We're going to pass in our post data. Why is that blank? Because it's a post, it's not a reply. If it was a reply, I'd put the ID of the thing that I was tagging it to on there. Then I'll just do an execute query and I'm done. So literally, that's all the social stuff you need. All the rest of this plugin is talking to CRM. So here's how it looks. I'm going to go into, whoops, here we go. I'm going to go into, uh, I, oh, and since it's running asynchronously in the CRM space, I'm going to leave the debug window open so you guys can see what happens in the background. So here is my open opportunity. I'm going to go ahead and open that opportunity. And I'm going to close this as a win. OK, so it's a win. The, the, uh, the actual 
dollar amount on this should be, it's on there somewhere. Um, so let's go ahead and make this for, I can't remember if I had to do this before or not. 50,000, yay, choose okay. Closed as a win. So the plugin is registered to run when um, it's closed as a win. So that's the config thing that I commented out, but then there's the hello from CRM 2011. That means that it's running in the background. It just ran my create post and it ran execute query. This morning when I was testing it out, um, the system was just a little bit sleepy and it took a little while. So let me jump back over here to newsfeed and uh, I'm not seeing it yet, but it'll show up. We go to everyone and that's the one. So here's the post. Gosh, no applause. Wow, these guys are tough. I think that's cool. Okay, you can applaud for that. It's really okay. But <laughs> what did I do? So Matt is the guy that owns this opportunity. I closed it as Willa, which is okay. Okay, you have to decide. I decided that whoever the sale was assigned to got the credit, not the person closing the opportunity. You can change that around. But here's the important point. Remember I said you cannot post on behalf of other people. You cannot post on behalf of other people. The CRM, um, the monster that is CRM, runs under a service account, just like SharePoint does, just like SQL does. So what I did is I created a user profile for that CRM service account. I gave it a nice little icon, pisses off the CRM guys, and I called it the CRM sales robot so that it looks good in here. Otherwise, it'd be like SRV underscore garbage, you know? And it says Matthew Pierre, P Pereira closed the deal for $50,000 on the custom SharePoint activity feed. Since I created these guys as social actors, I can click on Matthew. It'll take me to his user profile. All of that linking works for me. And since I, uh, back to everyone, and since I did the, uh, the link, this takes me right back to CRM. Okay, so that's how you can go from a very simple REST call, where it's just text, and you can start decorating it, making it cool. But if you have to proxy, if you have to do this by proxy, then you need to make some accommodations so that it, uh, um, so that it works for you. Now, I tried to do this with remote JavaScript. So you'll, you'll hear about the remote executor JavaScript file. Very, very cool. Spent days learning it. I even mocked up an entire app that ran on the CRM server to make sure that that communication was working. Worked great. Plugged it into, actually I think I even have the horrible, tawdry story about this. I do. So here's the deal. SharePoint 2013 has a site. I have a SharePoint app. I can call that app into the site. I can also, from an external system, I can also call directly to the site, which is not allowed. So what I can do is I can use this request executor JS. So I can't make a JavaScript object model call from a remote server. But if I use an iframe that's constructed by the remote um, e the request executor JS file that ships with SharePoint, and I call into an app, it says, OK, here's the social feeds. Here's everything you want to do. So I'm thinking I'm going to take all of this and put it all on my CRM site because then when the person closes it, I have them because the JavaScript runs as them. And CRM lets you load all the JavaScript in. It lets you take hours building this model out. It's perfectly happy to let you do all that. But as soon as you make the request, it says, mm, yeah, that's unsafe. So CRM blocked me from doing it. But if it was my own app, it totally would have worked. You could use, because you're not running, you're not doing impersonation. You're running as the user context in the browser when your JavaScript runs. It's just that the CRM team doesn't want you making external REST calls because you could do nefarious things, I guess. Okay. So that's, that's, my, that's, my, uh, that's my cautionary tale. That's not the coolest app, though. This, I think, was kind of cool. So what if, what if, you were, you wanted to do some stuff with social followers. Let me get this to full screen. Okay, what if you wanted to do something with social followers? Well, 
you could, here we go, there it is. Can you guys see that in the back? Yeah. Um, if you want to use the following, so let's say that you wanted to build a little app that when you logged in, you could see all the updates from the people who you follow. Now, I only built the followers, but I promise it's going to get much, much bigger because now that we've solved the issue of just talking to SharePoint. Um, so what you do is you grab the site, and then there's our API string, underscore API social following my, these are my followers, followed, and then there are followed types. There are four followed types. One is people, I think two is documents, four is um, sites, and eight is uh, hashtags. Okay? So you can get everything that somebody follows. And then these are bitwise operators. So if you want to get an array of everything that they have, then you can just take off the types. It'll give you everything. Or you can bitwise them together so that you can make specific queries. And then in this case, I cheated. I'm, I'm, using, some X, I'm using it as XML instead of using a, a, uh, a JavaScript call. But what you can do, the thing that I love most about testing with um, REST, as opposed to, remember I asked how many of you guys had, um, had built your own SharePoint test harnesses for the SOAP query services, is if this call doesn't work, so like here's the following, right? Here's, the, here's what it looks like. I just paste it into a browser, turn off feed reading, and pfft, I'm testing, okay? Because if this doesn't work, your app's not going to work. Okay, so that's what I love about working with REST. And of course, this is the XML version. You could send in the payload if you wanted to create the post header like I did before. You could send in the payload request JSON back. 10 to 20% smaller payload. Much easier to, I won't say much easier to work with, um, but definitely there are libraries that make it significantly easier to work with JSON. Um, but I also wanted to have some XML samples in there. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. But you'll notice at the top, I have a social actor. If I had requested different social types, like if I go in here and take off the, uh, let's go types. Let me go back. If I go types equal two. Okay, let's try types equal four. I'm not sure what Will is following here. There we go. So I still have social actor, and, um, but it'll give you different objects. So if you're going to do a combined call, then you're going to need to inspect which actor you're actually working with. Talking to the guys on the social team, you cannot extend, you can't add new actors to the API. And the magic word was there was a pause, and very quietly he said, yet. Because how cool would it be to be able to add your own following stuff? Like if you wanted to follow a lead in CRM, that would be cool. So you can have, so hopefully, at some point in the future, we will have the ability to extend these social, um, these social actors. So uh, what I did was went ahead and built this, uh, this little guy. And, and essentially, all it's doing is just making a REST call and then ripping through a whole bunch of, of XML that comes back, creating a contact, and throwing these guys into a list. So uh, let me F5 this. And what should happen is that. So these are the, follow these are the people that Willa follows, right? So this is the folks I follow list in, uh, in SharePoint, um, just making a REST call. And you can click on any one of them. And so that's her, that's Ruby's uh, last status note, looking forward to staring at the bottom of a stainless steel bowl. She eats like you can't imagine how fast she eats. But um, it gives us just a little bit of social data. We can piece through it. And, and look at other people. This is just that simple demo out of, uh, out of uh, the Windows 8 uh, SDK. And all I did was throw, instead of uh, binding to the default data type, I just went ahead and bound it to my REST data source so that I can, um, I can get the folks I follow. You can imagine adding additional things, like the documents I follow, the sites I follow. Do a people search, which I'll show you how to do in the search session. Do a people search, and then click on them, and follow them directly out of the desktop app. Okay, so just kind of some kind of cool ways to incorporate your, um, your applications into different, um, uh, into different systems around the, uh, around the SharePoint ecosystem. 
All right. So the most important thing is take your approach end to end. If you're going to integrate with CRM, then <laughs> test it out. Do the most dangerous stuff first, right? Don't go building out your UI and making sure all your little links work when the server's going to just deny your request anyway, OK? So make sure you, build your, you take your approach all the way end to end. Then fill in the details later. Make it cool. Add the sexy later. Okay? Getting this Windows 8 app to work was a nightmare. I could care less about the fact that I didn't have pictures yet. I just needed to get the authentication working. There is, if you're interested in building Windows 8 apps, there is a very cool article that was published. A lot of this stuff's published in the last month. But there's a, po there's a post where he goes through how to um, authenticate to uh, the cloud. And it's so stupid simple when you have the sample. And so if you're interested in building an app that will connect to both on-prem systems and the cloud, um, there is an MSDN sample. And if you're interested, just tweet me, and I'll post that sample out. Or remind me, and I'll tweet that sample out. Um, and he does. Um, he lets you connect to a site and then pull down all the lists and libraries and documents and stuff like that. So then connect, consider where you're connecting from. If you're going to connect from a phone, none of this matters, because you're going to be stuck using the Silverlight um, API or using REST. I shouldn't say none of it matters, but it, you have to consider the platform that you're connecting from. And then choose the right API or mix of APIs. Because you might do a whole bunch of CSOM and then decide to make two or three REST calls asynchronously because that's easier to do. And then one of the tricks is that you can use SharePoint apps as an entry point for your remote calls. So um, I didn't really go into that in great detail, but the idea here is that you can actually append that underscore API to the, to the, um, the application web. So you can apply underscore API and do all of those requests to the app web. But the app web must have social, if you're going to use social, or search features turned on in order for all of the plumbing to work. Okay, so you still have to go through the request permissions model um, that everybody's been talking about with apps if you're going to make that work. All righty, so uh, if you are liking this, then SP Evo 13 Dev 207, hit me at, at Matthew McD. That's the bit.ly, bit.ly MCD SP Evo 13. There's a placeholder blog post there, because I just haven't uh, been building apps. Um, I haven't had time to finish it out. But I will post everything up there in the next couple days with the slides, um, sample code links, and, uh, and stuff like that. Um, that's what I have for this morning. Thank you guys so much. If you have questions, come on up or meet me outside. Thank you. Thank you much.